buffering capacity. So I've talked about how uh, in order to have an effective buffer that can resist a change in pH, we have to have appreciable amounts of both the weak acid and its conjugate base. Um, and as it turns out, the more of those we have, the larger our buffering capacity is. So we can define that as the amount of protons or hydroxide ions the buffer can absorb without a significant change in pH. And significant, that's a little um, qualitative, um, but hopefully with this example, um, this will become obvious. And I'm gonna approach this from two different ways. One from a conceptual way and the other from actually calculating it. So now um, here's the problem. Calculate the change in pH that occurs when 0.01 mole of gaseous HCl is added to one liter of each of the following solutions. So that we're gonna have to calculate to calculate that change in pH. And then now this question, which solution has the largest buffering capacity? So hopefully based on the previous discussion and lecture videos, it becomes obvious which one has to have the largest buffering capacity. Um, and if that's not obvious to you yet, that's okay. We're gonna prove it with the calculation. But right away, I can see that it has to be solution A because solution A just simply has more buffer present. It's five molar acetic acid and five molar sodium acetate. And so because it has more of that weak acid and conjugate base present, it's gonna be able to absorb these protons uh, more effectively. Solution B, 0.05 molar and 0.05 molar, that would have a very small buffering capacity, okay? But all the same, let's do it. Let's do the calculation. So now this time we're adding HCl to our um, acetic acid buffer. And we remember we don't care about the chloride. We only care about the H plus. And this is a before and after table type of calculation. So let's set that up. So it's gonna be H plus, and then now we have to remember what is the H plus gonna react with? Is it gonna react with the acetic acid or is it gonna react with the sodium acetate? And hopefully you said it's gonna react with the acetate because the acetate is our conjugate base, so it wants to react with an acid. And remember, this is a full, complete reaction because a strong acid will always react to completion. And so that makes more acetic acid. Um, and there we go. That's all I need to write down. I'll, um, I'm going to rewrite that H just so it's a little bit more clear. Okay. Um, and so now in my before situation, I want to get the number of moles. We have to compare moles to moles when we do these type of calculations. So here this tells me 0.01 mole of HCl. So we'll just say 0.01 mole of H plus. And then now we'll do solution A first. And it's if it's five molar and we're talking about one liter, again, this is another easy conversion just to demonstrate the point here. This is now 5.00 mole and this is 5.00 mole. Okay. And then now after these react, the limiting reagent reacts to completion. And however much of the limiting reagent reacts, that's got to be the same amount of everything else that reacts. So now that means that acetate decreases by 0.01 moles, but it means that uh, acetic acid is going to have to increase by 0.01. And so now after this is all done, we've got zero, we've got 4.99, and we've got 5.01. So now we can do this quite simply just using our Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, okay? Which is uh, pH equals pKa plus the log of A minus over HA. So the um, pKa of acetic acid, uh, I've already calculated that up here. I'll just put it up on the page. So pKa for acetic acid is, um, well, I just remember the Ka. It's 1.8 uh, times 10 to the negative 5, okay? And if I take the log of that, yes, 4.74. Okay, perfect. So 4.74 for acetic acid. I don't expect you to have those memorized. This would be given to you. Okay. So now for that first solution, solution A, the pH is... 
uh, the pKa, which is 4.74, plus the log. Um, and now you can see here it's going to be the um, 4.99 divided by the 5.01. And hopefully what you can tell here is because that's very close to 1, and we remember the log of 1 is 0, this is not going to change the pH that significantly, right? So we can say 4.99 um, divided by 5.01, and I take the log of that, and there's no negative or anything, so now it's 4.74 plus, um, let's see here, did I do that right? That doesn't seem right. Let me try this again. 4.99 divided by 5.01, um, yeah, that's not right. 4.99 divided by 5.01. Okay, there it is. And now when I take the log, okay, that's more what I was expecting. Okay, so negative 0 0.0017. So you can see that's going to hardly touch it within the sig figs, right? So we can say pH for solution A is basically just equal to its pKa, 4.74. So now what happens with the sodium or with a uh, solution B? Okay. Well, I didn't leave myself a whole lot of room here, but the way that this is going to shake out is now I've still got my 0.01 mole of H plus, but now in this example, it's 0.05 moles of acetate and 0.05 moles of acetic acid. And when that 0.01 moles reacts, this is going to change the concentration much more significantly. Okay, so now we can see. Ooh, oh, bless me. So now we can see that um, calculation is going to go pH equals 4.74, which is the Ka, plus the log. And then now I didn't have enough room to finish writing it on the concentrations, but hopefully what you can see here now is the acetate is 0.05 minus 0.01, which is 0 0.04, and the acetic acid is 0.05 plus 0.01, which is 0 0.06, um, and that number is going to be much more significant than what we saw before. So let's see if I can do this without making a mistake here. Um, yep, that looks right. Two thirds, right? 0.04 divided by 0.06. And then I'm going to take the log of that. And you can see now my pH is going to be 4.74 minus uh, 0 0.18. And that is a much more significant change. So we get the pH of that new solution to be 4.56. Okay. So once again, just by looking at this problem and seeing that there's 5 molar of acetic acid and 5 molar of sodium acetate, we can say automatically that one has to have the larger buffering capacity. And uh, when we did through the calculation, right, we noted that after that H plus is added, the pH of the solution becomes 4.74. But for solution B, that pH becomes 4.56. So there was a much more significant change in pH for that solution B because it had a much lower buffering capacity. And if we look at this graphically here, this is kind of the same situation that we've got. Um, so this is showing you pH after the addition of HCl or NaOH, either way. We know that when we add um, HCl, it's going to make the solution more acidic. And if we add, so this is the HCl, and if we add NaOH, it's going to make the solution more basic. So now what is this on the y-axis, or the x-axis rather? So this is the acetic acid buffer concentration. And you can see when it's large on the order of one molar, there's hardly a change, right? The pH basically hovers right at that pKa value, 4.74, 4.75, something like that, right? But now as we dilute, so I'm going to say work backwards, as we dilute our buffer, right, as it becomes more and more dilute, you can see now upon addition of HCl or upon addition of NaOH, the pH does change much more significantly.